Okay guys, now it's a real honor today introducing Gilbert Foscroft as part of the Diver Kingfisher team going forward in sharing information with you guys to give you better results. Now Gilbert needs no introduction. For years he's been sharing a lot of information with all the freshwater guys out there with forums, clinics, articles in the magazines and then absolutely fantastic achievements. Gilbert, welcome. Thank and it's so a real much. honor to have you here. It's a great pleasure. Thank you so much. Now, on that topic, achievements, um, this, most guys know what you guys achieved, um, but I, I want to share it with the rest of the guys that probably don't know it yet. Gilbert and them were part of the Protea team of South Africa that won the World Championships four times in a row. That's it. The only sports team or Protea team ever to do that in South Africa, yes. and I think internationally. Internationally, um, no, on the fishing no, side. Yeah. No, no a uh, fishing team ever has managed to win the World FIPS Championships more than three times. That's a magnificent achievement and I think it never got the exposure it deserved at the level it got achieved. I mean, no other sport guys, if we talk about everything, rugby, cricket, no, no one has ever achieved that kind of uh, uh, winning ever in the history of South Africa. So that's well done. Where was that fish? 2008 was at Bloomhoff Dam. Uh, at this uh, the bamboo sprite uh, resort um, there we won by a margin of one and a half thousand kilos yeah. um, 2009 we were not given a chance by the Europeans in fact Mitch Smith uh, from the from the English team uh, grabbed us by the with the, at the registration in uh, uh, Ubi, and he said last year was a hoax you had a hometown advantage, mm. you will never win in Europe. And we went back to the hotel room and said, no ways. We are going to fish for a win. And uh, well, we managed to win it by the biggest points margin ever recorded. We had five points and the second place team had 12 points. Sure. So that was absolutely fantastic. Then 2010, we went to the home of carp fishing at linear fisheries in the UK and we won it again uh, the next year was in Italy and although our practice session went absolutely fantastic Loki and I actually uh, beat the, the lake record of 72 hours in the first 36 hours of practice yeah. so we were so confident you can't believe and when the championship started uh, the fish was just not there and we had to urgently make plans and one of our runners came came past us and said listen the English team just had two fish on very long rigs so I said how long is the rigs they said no as long as the rods I said how long is the rods they said well 12 foot so I had a smile and uh, grabbed out of my box I got my my, my zig holder unwound measured cast the, the zig out and I didn't even have time to put the indicator on and we had the first fish on. Now 33 fish later we won our zone and uh, the team won the world championships for the fourth time. But it shows you how important preparation and knowing about different methods that's something a lot of our saltwater supporters maybe don't know yet how technical and involved the freshwater side really is in your fish finding, your structure finding, the columns they're feeding in the different, like you were t telling me earlier, salt or gravel. That's it. Brings me to another point. This weekend, you guys just created a new record or set up a new <laughs> record at Rudder Copies again. Yeah, that was uh, it. Was one of those uh, things that you 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 normally get that pre-spawn uh, when the fish really goes into this massive feeding frenzy. And although it was it is winter time, I mean it was really cold. We managed to buy. I wouldn't say luck, but the previous weekend I, I had a, a, did a clinic and I messed around on the bottom and I felt, you know, this whole place is just covered in gravel. So why would the fish be here? And I just plumbed around with my lead until I found a soft area and I thought, hang on, soft area, smooth gravel, a uh, smooth silt, uh, that would be the home for bloodworm and snails and all sorts of stuff. So I put my, my rig exactly in that area and within an half an hour we had the first fish. 
I did it again, had another fish, did it again, had another fish, and, and five fish later, I thought, shibbit, you know, I might have something here. Um, but another thing was I used a sweet solution uh, called Thalmate, and instead of flavors and colorings and whatever. So I just used a tiger nut with a piece of high density foam as a citer and to lift up the bait ever so slightly onto the salt and it was a massive result. So we what was arrived, the result? Well, we had for the Saturday since uh, from, from sunrise to sunset we had 52 fish at an average weight of 9.91 kilos which was uh, and it, it was topped by a fish of 13.71 the biggest fish ever caught in a competition at Rurikopi's Dam so that was just it was mind-blowing as a matter of fact um, four times we had four runs pretty much at the same time so you know I picked up the rod had a fish on then the next one ran my son picked it up he had a fish on then the next one went it was just it was a frenzy that I can't explain and the guys right next to us had nothing uh, sure. and they were fishing on the gravel and I was fishing right in the salt and that was the the, the biggest difference and that again shows the technical side of the carp fishing now a bit more about that just to make the people understand that that hasn't followed carp fishing as such carp fishing kind of falls in between specimen carp fishing and bank angling That's it. bank angling being our best biggest participated in South Africa, Correct. carp fishing quickly growing to that level, but it's a 72 hour circuit yes. where you fish on herring, braid, that type of specimen style, That's it. and you have to catch as many fish as possible Correct. Um, in 72 hours. That's, it. That's the format. That's it. So um, the 72 hour event means that you are bound inside a camp 20 meters wide by 12 meters deep. That's it. You cannot go outside there. You can't cast outside that imaginary borderline. Um, they call it a box in, 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 in French. So inside that box. So your rod may not go yeah, outside that. Board, so yeah. you have to play the fish inside the imaginary box. You've got to land it inside the imaginary box. Otherwise the fish is disqualified. I always find that quite difficult because, I mean, it's a challenge. You get a pig, that's your zone regardless of what's there now you have to find a yep. way of getting your fish or your results with what you have Good. you get delta caught not by your choice that's it. and then what you have is what you got and you need to make it work and that's Good. why i think all that experience you guys have got over years comes together in that little box correct having, you know there's so many things i mean your feature finding is absolutely crucial mm. if you do the feature finding wrong you're going to put the wrong bait in or you're going to put the, put the bait in the wrong position um your, your positioning of your, of your hook baits. Um, you know, whatever you put in, you can't take out. So you've got to be so ever so careful to, to, to make sure that you, you, you get the balance right. If you get the balance wrong, you, 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 you've messed mess it up. up. your box. <laughs> um, so, and, and a lot of countries have done that in the past where, you know, we've, you, we gradually build up the swim to a, a level. Um, in 2009, I remember so clearly, um, Loki and I had uh, a massive haul at, at, at Bloomhoff Dam at the national trials. The competition was stopped for 10 hours due to heavy winds and, and lightning and storms and you don't want to know. Uh, guys broke rods and pods and bent poles on their tents. It was just not fun. But they come and weigh our fish the officials come and weigh the fish every hour and a half. That is a FIPS rule. So they came and weighed our fish at 10 o'clock. And when they came back at 11.30, we had 68 fish, 178 kilos. That is how hectic it can go. But it can be the opposite as well. You can sit there and just look at your rods and think, what are, what are we doing? You know? that's, that's some serious fishing in an hour and a half. Yeah. <laughs> no, we had double ups like you can't believe. And, and Lucky like Levis is uh, Gilbert's partner on, on the peg fishing, or used to be, um, just to put you guys on the picture. No, he's, he's my brother from another mother. Yeah, I know, <laughs> noticed that, you guys. <laughs> yeah, the wall. That's now, it. another question I want to ask you. Um, this is now new grounds, Dawa, Korda, King Fisher being now the new team you have joined. Yes. And uh, I know, being a bit on the freshwater side myself, the Dawa hasn't really, the, the guys haven't 
had the opportunity to really use the potential of Dawa Tackle here in South Africa, which is leading in Europe, or one of the leading brands, with the rod developers, and especially on the casting side, accuracy, as we did with Danny Febras a couple of years ago, we made some videos with him um, in South Africa. So, how do you see? Are you excited about joining these brands? Oh yes, no. It's 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 always it's always, you know, when it when it when I have the opportunity to get involved in 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 developing brands or developing um, new materials for 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 carp angling and and bank angling. You know, I just love it. it nice. I, I get this buzz that I mean, I can't I can't even sleep. You know, I sat writing articles last night until um, after midnight, um, just because it's that's my passion. You know, it's 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 in your blood. If it's in your blood, it's you can't stop it. So, um, yeah, for me, the important thing is to to grow the brand of Daiwa um, amongst the the general angling public, because there are items for everyone. There are entry level, mid range, extremely top end uh, stuff. And obviously, there's reasons for entry, mid-range, their and, own application, yeah. and they've got their own applications. And which cable will run you guys through as it yes. goes along with no, the product? No, we'll we'll do that on a regular basis. We'll go through the various tackle items that's available. We're going to be shooting lots of video clips, um, I hope, and you know, share a lot of information with the general public. Um, the important thing is, um, you know, I've I've been given the opportunity to to help develop rods tailor-made for the South African market. Great. Yeah. So, um, and we all know that the South African uh, general carp anglers and bank anglers are normally big guys, long arms, strong, and uh, where the guys in the UK would cost 80, 90 more yards, yeah. <laughs> more finesse fishing, they need a two and a quarter pound tesco or a two and a half pound tesco rod. Here we need something way heavier than that. Not heavier, but stronger. So, you know, to fish 72 hours, you've got to hold a rod in your hand for the biggest part of that. Yes. So, after 72 hours, I promise you, I can't open up my hands. It's just hours, you know, you, you, you get yes. stiff. So, the important thing is to, to, to help create rods that is tailor-made for South Africa, that you can cast, um, that you can obviously cast within certain limits. Because who wants to cast a carp rod? with a six ounce lead. Mm -hmm. You've got to do that within certain parameters. So that's yes. what, what, what the, the whole aim is. Now that's very exciting. It's, as we've done now on the saltwater side, it's going to start now with your help and assistance on the freshwater side. That's yeah. very exciting. And having an innovative brand like Quarter backing all of that up just well, rounds it off. Fantastic. I mean, you know, um, I, was, I was probably the first guy in South Africa to, to, to import for myself from, from the tackle box in the UK, uh, Quarter, uh, equipment like like uh, the, their first funnel webs and stuff like that and I remember the very very first weekend I fished a Donaldson Dam um, I used the not the first time I fished it but the first opportunity I had to use the quarter, the quarter stuff, stuff. Um, I had a, a, a haul of, of uh, uh, two, two doubles, two twenties, thirteen thirties, two forties and a fifty pounder all in one weekend and it was just a new method, new opportunities. I used the curve shank hooks, which is still a massive hit in, in, um, in, in Europe and for sure in South Africa. A lot of fish are caught on quarter products and they've, they've expanded their range so dramatically that you know I, I just can't wait to get the general public in using those, those sort of items. My experience with quarter and the time I spent, the short time I spent with Danny Febros gave me um, kind of the indication that he's hands-on and everything. He doesn't want a product for the sake of having a product at all. No. Unless he tests or proves it himself and he sure. knows it works, being the angler he is internationally, that's, it. that's when he introduced it as his product line. And uh, I think you would agree with me, that's part of quarter success. Oh, yes. Why it's such an effective product. That's it. And, 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 and if you look at the, the, the sort of marketing strategy, the fact that they are, are in the public's face all the time, new innovations, new methods, showing people how to do it yourself. You know, it's easy to go and buy a ready-made rig, but it's so much more pleasing if you build it yourself no, and you it. catch that fish yes. and, and, you, and you start evolving. And I mean, I get onto the bank so many times and I see people just do it so wrong. Um, the very first, before I get fishing, I actually only 
my first responsibility in, 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 in my soul is to try and help that guy to just improve or, yeah. or fix that. Because I want him to be successful, and well, that's one of the working with the ASA when you join the right team, because that's what we, what drives us is to share the information so people can get the results. So right. it's very, very privileged to have you here as well. Thank you so much. And um, on that topic, um, just one of Corda's product, the Corda Goo, having a strong South African development influence from from local events, and I don't know who else was involved with, but I know he was for a fact yeah. was involved with that. Um, the fact that they're willing to adapt. And I think it, it, it plays part with, with you guys, your performance at the World Games as well, that opened yes. that door for Corda to notice the skill in South Africa. For sure. And to, to first of all, to First of all, our, our casting skills were way better than, than anyone else's. So I remember in 2011, the guys were sitting behind us with telephoto lenses and video cameras. I actually got some of the video clips that one of the Russian guys gave me about three years later and said listen I can't live with myself um, we became friends and uh, he said listen here's a memory stick there's 15 gig worth of um, video clips that we took sure. from you they they had um, uh, microphones and all sorts of stuff they you can actually hear every single word we speak on the pegs oh, nice. um, oh. so so they evaluated our casting style they went back and they went and practiced and practiced and practiced and perfected what we had already perfected. So they caught up to a very, very large extent. But it also meant that, you know, um, certain, certain guys went back to their rod developers and said, listen, we need rods that can do what these guys are doing because we don't have anything like that. And, and so the entire market, um, went into a direction based on our performances and they could see whenever we cast something boom there's a green splash what's that green splash you know so it, it and, and our policemen I mean the guys from Hungary just went ballistic when they saw our policemen I mean we every single time we went overseas we had to hand our, our court policemen to them because the policeman has got a unique function and, and a lot of specimen guys out there would think no come on, <laughs> this guy's a pop hoya. Um, but it's, it's, it's really like that. If you have, if you're fishing for nest style and you've got a little cork policeman, you see the indication on the policeman before you get the indication on the long. That, what you said now is, is really nice of the era, the fantastic era we're living in with the dynamics of being able to raise the ball from every country in the world. We're yeah. seeing everyone and YouTube is one of the platforms that's giving us that opportunity to share and people share back that's and it. learn from each other. And that's how things evolved. And yeah. I think fishing, we're in such an exciting era when it comes to product development and the ball being raised the whole time, species. And I always, I'm, I've got this whole thing I always believed in, which people sometimes look at me funny, especially in non-anglers, of the intelligence of fish. That if you don't continuously improve and adapt and come up with new ideas, you're going to stay behind in the fishing because they learn from it. And a simple fact is where we saw it, we tested it with drop shot on the saltwater side. The first year we just caught so many fish. Second year we battled to get fish, but you go and dive, they're all still there. They're just avoiding it. And the same happens with all species. So we even did a test for, for years. I had tank, fish tanks with species we catch and stuff in them. And you can see how intelligent they actually are. Yeah. So what's happening here is, is all just great for fishing and it's developing new techniques and having you on board on the freshwater side, uh, I think like what I mentioned in the beginning, we're really privileged. And Thank you. the viewers, guys, you're privileged with what's going to be shared on, on these channels from an information point of view. And I just want to say to Gilbert, we're excited with what you're going to bring to the party and I think the market and all our freshwater anglers share that sentiment Thank very you. much. No, I'm excited as well. And welcome once again and we're going to do a whole bunch of videos going forward with, with Gilbert and willing to share everything as he's done for many years. One question I still want to ask you, how many years have you now dedicated your passion, your life to fishing? I started doing carp fishing um, on, a, on a dedicated basis in 1993. Sure. So yeah. I've been doing it for the best part of 26 years. Yeah. And still hooked? I'm hooked bigger than ever. Now there's a couple of things. You're going to have to come saltwater fishing a bit with it. I'm sure you have. Yeah, I've, do, I've done some, but I would yeah. love to do some. Yes, yeah. for sure. Get the arm stretch. Now in the sardine run is actually the <laughs> right time, but very disappointing because so many fish gets lost. Yeah. Um, unfortunately. But 
yeah, we're looking forward to that as well. Spending fresh water time with you and uh, dragging you with on some of the saltwater expeditions. No problem. Thank you so much. Thanks, Gilbert. Thank you.